more practice, more practice, more practice, more practice. That's what you keep saying. But guess what? Really, no matter how much you practice, it just literally is not working. You're maintaining the same level. You're not building. Why? Because you keep practicing the same things over and over in the same manner, hoping that something's gonna change. And this is one of the main problems here in the US is a lack of understanding of how to structure practice sessions, how to have goals and themes for those sessions, and how to have results that are measurable, that you can actually measure your progress. Today, I'm just gonna take a couple minutes and I'm just gonna kinda walk you through what actually structuring a theme or a goal for your practice session should look like. So it starts with making a goal. Everybody should have a long-term goal, and this should be one specified goal, ideally. Within this one main goal, there should be at least five short-term goals that are gonna lead up to that main goal. And this main goal might be three years, five years, 10 years from now, but these short-term goals should all be six to 24 months from now. What are you hoping to accomplish at that tournament in October or that tournament in November? These are short-term goals. Now, branching off from each of these short-term goals should be specific things as far as what you need to do to structure your game to prepare well for those. So let's just say, for example, if one of our short-term short goals is this or that, and there are six things that I need to prepare to get ready for that short-term goal, let's just use, for example, um, I need to improve the quality of my short serve. My short serve is too bouncy. How can I control the first bounce? And how can I be able to keep that serve lower to the specified location. Another one might be short receive. How can I be able to see clear as far as where the ball's at, being able to measure the timing, and to be able to give a quality short receive. Maybe another one is better positioning on counter loop. Maybe one has to do with developing a better pre-point routine. Maybe another one has to do with giving yourself more affirmation when you win a point. So instead of detailing everything, I'm just gonna pick one thing. So in getting ready for this short-term goal, maybe one thing is half-long receive, half-long serve return. When an opponent serves half-long, let's say to your forehand, this is an issue as far as you're not being able to get it. So what are you gonna say? More practice, more practice, more practice. I'm just gonna keep practicing the same thing until I get it. I, I, I hope you don't say that. I hope you say, okay, let's break it down and let's actually figure for my half long receive, what are the elements of it that I need to get better in order to be able to get it up 200, 300, 400 points better than it currently is? So these are just some things that I wrote out. Maybe they apply to your serve return, maybe they don't, but these are some things as an example. Maybe the first is identifying which one is actually short and which one is half long. The next one is better positioning. Are you really moving both feet into position that you feel that I'm in the good position? Because no matter how well you are, good you are at identifying, if you can't get your feet in position, that doesn't do you any good. Also, if you're in position but you don't have balance where you're able to actually have a weight transfer on it, that's not gonna do you any good either. So do you have balance? Are you able to learn how to get in position? Are you able to be balanced? If you do, you've got a good start. What about the next thing for your backswing? Are you taking your hand back by itself or is your body actually bringing the hand back? What about contact? When you contact the ball, what kind of action or feel do you have on the ball? Are you peeling the ball? Are you gumming the ball? What is the actual feel, feel like when you're contacting the ball? What about your exhale? Are you exhaling as you hit? What about muscle tension? Where is the power coming from? Is the power coming from your legs? Is it coming from your wrist? Is it coming from your forearm? Is it coming from your core? Is it coming from your shoulder? Where is your power coming from? The next thing is follow through. As you follow through, are you following through just with your arm? Or are you following through with a weight transfer? How do you feel on your follow through? What about the next ball? What about the sequence afterwards? So if we take one of the aspects of what you need to get ready for, and we're able to detail it out, now here's the challenge for you and your coach. Pick one of these aspects. At the most, pick two and spend the whole lesson on that. We're gonna talk about, hmm, how about 
positioning and balance. We're going to spend literally an hour with me serving half long to your forehand and you being able to move and get into the exact position and be able to have balance that you feel, hey, I have this much weight on this foot and I have this much weight on that foot. And do it again and do it again and do it again and do it again. And it might take more than an hour. It might take five lessons of one hour. Or it might take less. Maybe you get it in 20 minutes. What do we do then? We go to the next one. What do we do then? We go to the next one. What do we do then? We go to the next one. And as you see, we systematically work through what are all the necessary elements and are you able to understand the necessary elements? And if you can, then you're gonna make progress in that particular skill. So what's the point of this video anyway? The point of this video is that thousands of players nationwide keep practicing the exact same drills again and again with no theme and no goal as far as what they're actually trying to achieve. I'm convinced that for every private lesson, for every group session, for every robot training session, there needs to be a specified goal. If you've got a dry erase board at home, get your marker out. Write out your plan. If you don't have a dry erase marker, uh, get a notebook and just start taking notes. Detailed notes every 10, 15 minutes where you actually have a goal and you're asking yourself, what are the things I need to do to reach that goal? It's going to make a lot more progress than you just doing the same things over and over. I'm Samson Nabina. Thanks for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down below and make sure you turn on the bell for no more notifications. I'll see you soon.